Hi guys, it's Sister Muriel with Pitching It Real and I'm coming on today to encourage you to get started. So, say it with me. On your mark, get set, let's go. Let's take a look at God's Word and see what God has to say about us getting up and getting started. Let's look at James chapter 2. We're going to look at uh, verse 14. And then I'll skip around a little bit and I'll give you those verses as I go along. But James 2 verse 14 says, My brothers and sisters, what good does it do if someone claims to have faith but doesn't do any good things? Let's move down to verse 18. Another person might say, You have faith, but I do good things. Show me your faith apart from the good things you do. I will show you my faith by the good things I do. You believe that there is one God? That's fine. The demons also believe that and they tremble with fear. You fool. Do you have to be shown that faith which does nothing is useless? Let's drop down to verse 28, and it says, A body that doesn't breathe is dead. In the same way, faith that does nothing is dead. Amen. So, let's sit and think about all the things that God has told us to do and the visions, the dreams, the ideas that are driving you from the inside out and then let's sit and think about why we aren't moving on them so i like to use myself as an example i don't mind being a guinea pig for the lord there are things that i know that i'm supposed to be doing and oftentimes the spirit of fear comes and also self-condemnation comes um, I love encouraging God's people, but I get a little intimidated because number one, I think I'm a little ghetto. <laughs> number two, what makes my platform just as good as someone else's? I don't have the resources or the equipment to make great videos and, um, have I really spent enough time with God to even share information with you. So I decided today that I'm going to be like Nike and I'm going to just do it, amen. And I pray that this video encourages you to do the same thing. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So he's always gonna give us excuses for why we don't get started. No money, no friends, no help, no venue, no wisdom no support there's always going to be something that comes to make you think you're not ready but what i want to come and encourage you and let you know that if you never get started you won't get started the bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the lord so you have to be stepping for him to order your steps but then you might say, but I'm not righteous, Muriel. None of us are righteous. We've been made righteous through Christ Jesus. So therefore, take what you have. Use what you know. And just get started. And let God give the increase. Amen. Let's not be like the person who do, do good works, but don't have faith. In fact, you have to have faith. Even if it's just the size of, size of a mustard seed, to make that step, that very first step, amen. So what I want to do is I want to challenge you to write the vision down. The Bible say write the vision down and make it plain, amen. And then it says after you have done all that you can do, do research, talk to people, Get on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Study what other people are doing. Inbox them. Ask them questions. Ask them, can you shadow them? 
And when God sees your faith, he's going to put people in your pathway that's going to give you the wisdom that you need, possibly the finances that you need, the equipment that you need, the leads that you need. So I want to challenge you, stop waiting until you get ready. Amen. Because the longer you wait, the longer someone else has to wait on you. Amen. I say that to say that Everything that we've been called to do is not necessarily for us. And a lot of people get wrapped up in, in witty ideas on how to make money. But in the process of making that money, God wants you to encourage somebody else. God wants you to take somebody else with you, to teach somebody else. Amen. So it's not just so that we can get famous and it's not so that we can get rich even though he wants us to prosper and be in good health that's his scripture but the process is what he wants to use to bless and encourage somebody else amen so faith without works is dead amen so what i say to you is you can say that you have faith all day long but until you get up and put some steps together. Put some motion in that vision together. You never know how long you're going to be stagnated. Amen. So don't worry about your dialect like I do sometimes because I know I'm ghetto and goofy. Don't worry about that. Because the audience that God has for you is going to receive you just like you are. Don't worry about your past. Oh, I'm not good enough or this happened to me and people are going to find out this and people are going to find out that. You can't worry about it. If God has placed a vision, a purpose, a plan together just for you, amen, then he's desiring to see you be obedient. He said, if you are willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. Amen. So God desires to use you, use your witty ideas, goofy or not, amen. What you have and what you have not, amen. Who you know and who you know not, amen. Because I can tell you honestly, I thought my progress and my success was going to come from knowing people who've already arrived. And that's not the pathway God has placed me in. Amen. So, I do have to be still and see the salvation of the Lord. But still, it's not laying in my bed waiting on somebody to knock on my door to say, come on, Muriel, let's do this. No. Being still is being patient and waiting on God. Being still is getting in his presence and getting the instruction. Being still is taking one step at, at a time, acknowledging him in all your ways so that he can direct your path. And being still means to trust. Don't be anxious for nothing. And enjoy the process because there is something to be learned. There is something to be enjoyed. In the process. And remember, in the process, somebody's watching you. We are actually role models to some that we would never know. So when you step out on faith, you're helping, helping them come along as well. So I want to encourage you to get up and get started. I know this video may be a little goofy and throw it off a little bit because it's been a long time. But you know what I said to myself? No matter what, I'm getting on here, and I'm going to do it anyway. You know why? Because every day I lay down in my bed, the unction of the Holy Spirit tells me to get up, sit up, and get started. And you know what I tell the Lord? I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next month. I do it after I lay down and roll and spit and foam in your presence. And that's not what he's waiting on. He's waiting on me to have faith enough to step out on this thing and trust him. Amen. You may not talk perfect. I don't. But I don't care. You know why I don't care? Because God has ordained me for those who will receive me. Amen. 
And if they don't receive me, then that's not the audience that God has for me. So I can't wear that. You can't wear that. Amen. Be what God has called you to be. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says that I know the plans I have for you. God has plans for you. And he didn't specify any specific person in that scripture. He said, for I know the plans I have for you. Amen. So he knows who you are. He knows your hangups. He knows your fears. He knows your lack. Amen. He knows your needs before you know your needs. Amen. But he has a plan. Amen. So let's get up. Shake off the doubt. Shake off the fear. Shake off the thoughts that are in your head. Shake off the comments from other people. And let's get up and be about our Father's business. So on your mark, get set, get started. Yay! Hey!